In this series, we will explore the amazing journey of two of mankind's emissaries to the future. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. In this video, we will look at the journey of Voyager 1. Its astonishing travels through the space. And its achievements of becoming one of the longest operating spacecraft, and the farthest traveled object ever. We will also look at the amazing ways by which this spacecraft is able to send data, even after more than 43 years of operations. The two spacecraft Voyager mission was designed to replace the original plan for a grand tour of the planets that would have used four highly complex spacecrafts to explore the five outer planets during the late 1970s. Voyager 1 was launched on September 5, 1977, after the launch of Voyager 2 on August 20, 1977. Voyager mission was launched in 1977 to take advantage of a rare planetary alignment that takes place once every 176 years. This alignment helped spacecrafts to go from planet to planet by accelerating as they entered one planet's gravitational pull and then flying out to the next one. This gravitational acceleration used by spacecrafts is called gravity assist. Because of a faster route, Voyager 1 exited the asteroid belt earlier than its twin, having overtaken Voyager 2 on December 15, 1977. Voyager 1 started its mission with a flyby of Jupiter on March 5, 1979. Beginning January 30, 1979, Voyager 1 took one picture every 96 seconds for a span of 100 hours to generate a color time-lapse movie depicting 10 rotations of Jupiter. Images sent back till January 1979 indicated that Jupiter's atmosphere was more turbulent than during the Pioneer flybys in 1973 to 1974. It also sent details about Jupiter's moons. After the Jupiter encounter, Voyager 1 continued its journey towards Saturn. On October 10, 1979, scientists did a course correction to ensure that the spacecraft would not hit Saturn's moon, Titan. Its flyby of Saturn, on November 12, 1979, was as spectacular as its previous encounter with Jupiter. Voyager 1 discovered five new moons of Saturn. It also sent detailed photographs of Saturn's moons, most interestingly, Titan. Atmospheric data from Titan suggested that it might be the first body in the solar system, other than Earth, where liquid might exist on the surface. In addition, the presence of nitrogen, methane, and more complex hydrocarbons indicated that prebiotic chemical reactions might be possible on Titan. Because of the specific requirements for the Titan flyby, Voyager 1 was not directed towards Uranus and Neptune. Instead it continued north of the ecliptic solar plane, at a speed of about 325 million miles, or 523 million kilometers per year. On February 14, 1990, Voyager 1 took the famous, Solar System Family Portrait Photographs. It consists of about 60 images, of the Sun and planets. The family portrait was taken when Voyager 1 was about, 3.7 billion miles, or 6 billion kilometers, from the Sun. All the planetary encounters were finally over, in 1989, and the missions of Voyager 1 and 2 were declared part of the Voyager Interstellar mission, which officially began January 1, 1990. The goal of the new mission was to extend NASA's exploration of our solar system beyond the neighborhood of the outer planets to the outer limits of the Sun's sphere of influence, and possibly beyond. Voyager 1 continued its journey into the deep dark space to go beyond, where no other human-made object had ever ventured before. On February 17, 1998, Voyager 1 overtook Pioneer 10 to become the most distant human-made object in existence. On August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 claimed the title of being the first human-made object to exit the heliosphere, the region of space where solar winds from the sun fade away, and the object enters the vast expanse between stars and galaxies. Traveling for over 43 years, and a distance of more than 22 billion kilometers, or 14 billion miles, Voyager 1 still continues to collect data and transmit it to scientists on Earth. Voyager 1 uses three plutonium dioxide radioisotope thermoelectric generators to power its instruments. Voyager 1 has a 20-watt transponder that is used to transmit data to Earth. On Earth, scientists use NASA's Deep Space Network to capture signals from Voyager 1. NASA's Deep Space Network is a special arrangement of large antennas spread across the globe that are used to analyze very faint signals from outer space. 
Being at a distance of 22 billion kilometers, signals from Voyager 1 take more than 21 hours to reach Earth. Even though, ideal for powering instruments for long periods of time, the plutonium generators aboard Voyager 1 have a limited lifespan. It's assumed that after 2025, the plutonium generators will not be able to generate enough power to support instruments aboard Voyager 1. Once the power source dies, we won't be able to communicate with our long-standing emissary in space. It will silently continue its eternal journey amongst the stars. Voyager 1 carries a message, in the form of a gold-plated copper disk, for potential extraterrestrial or future humans, who might find the spacecraft. The disk contains messages in 55 different languages, and also instructions on how to play them. Both the Voyager spacecrafts, will continue their silent journey for many many years to come. They will remain a symbol of our existence and curiosity, even if we cease to exist. We hope you like this video. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video, if you would like us to make improvements, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. Until next time, thank you, have a good day.